Hi everyone. Have you ever needed to do some real strategic brainstorming for your business or your organization or even just your team? One of the best ways to do that is with Pestel analysis and you'll find it's a very, very common form of analysis that can really help you find out what the risks are on the horizon so you can avoid them in the future. Now Pestel stands for political, environmental risks, social risks, technological risks, economic risks and legal risks. And it's basically a form of these, uh, putting these into buckets. So what are the political risks coming up on the horizon that we need to be aware of? And what do we need to do about it? So what are the actions that we can take now that we know what's coming up and what's risky for our business? This particular sheet is really, really great because we do have that action register and we can create a new one very easily and it will give us the automatic numbers there as well, which is just a really nice little trick. We can do the same for our political uh, ideas here. Once we add a new idea, then it will give us a, a new number automatically on the side. And we're also going to go through the exact questions that you can ask your team to do this brainstorming as part of this spreadsheet. So it's really, really valuable for you and your team. Let's get into it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create the heading and the colors and the framing of our sheet. And we may speed this up ever so slightly as we go along so we can get into the really good stuff of creating the Pestel analysis itself. For our cells, what we actually want is the first one can be normal, but see, let's have uh, the, the width of that needs to be around 40. And the same for column F, around 40, and that's gonna give us something nice to work with. Now for our rows, if we right click these and say the row height, the row height for our rows, we want that to be around 30. Now that's gonna give us something nice to start with. Now let's create our heading row. We'll give ourselves just a nice light blue, a nice light turquoise color, very, very nice. Let's merge and center the top. This can be our Pestel analysis. And our second row, if we actually just merge this one as well, and what we want to do is color that white, and we're going to put a nice border around this one. This is going to be our organization or the team that we're brainstorming for. Let's put that over to the left and increase the indent, maybe make it a little bit larger. And now we've got the basic heading for us to start with, which is really, really good. Now we can get into each of the, the analysis sections themselves. So first of all, let's create a template. So we'll select B and C in these, these first two cells. And for this one, we can actually just put a nice thick border around all of that. In fact, let's go a step further and select more borders and see how many we can do at once. So if we actually keep our thick border here, maybe we're going to make this a little bit of a gray border. And if we select these borders again, that will change them automatically. But we also want uh, a dashed line in between. Now that can be just a normal dashed line. We'll keep that color gray and we'll put that in the middle. And we just want a normal solid line for our, for our vertical line there. So if we select OK, then that's going to do a lot of the work for us. We might just want uh, to select that heading and give ourselves a thick border around the heading. Now that's looking really, really good. Maybe we'll get rid of this particular one on the side. There we go. Now that's looking a little bit better. So this first one, we're going to put a P over in the middle and we'll put this in the middle and the center. Increase the size a little bit. And this will be our political section. Put this in the center and the middle and increase the size of that as well. Maybe make that uh, italic so that's a little bit nicer. Now for our heading area, let's make that a deep blue. We'll make the text white. In fact, the P can be bold and we can make that maybe just a lighter gray so it doesn't stand out too much. Our section down the side can also be nice and blue. All of this text can be in the middle. And we just want to right click and say format cells. We want the alignment to wrap text so that it uh, just wraps around and that's a little bit nicer. Now here are the questions that we're going to be asking. What are the trading policies that might impact us in the future? What regulations do we have to follow politically? And what will happen if another party or another political party gains power? Will that change things in the way we need to do business? And what future policies coming up in the political landscape are we aware of or do we need to be aware of? 
These are the beautiful brainstorming questions that we can ask our team. But we also want our automatic numbering system too. So what we're going to do is for our first one, or let's put this in the center, make sure it's white. We'll make sure it looks the way that we want it to look. And, uh, but what we're going to do is just a little bit of formula code. And we're going to say if this, this particular cell, so if, uh, if C5 is blank, then we're going to also be blank. So just the two empty quotes, uh, that is a blank uh, if it's true. Now, if it's not blank, then we want to say it's number one. It's our first one. And we'll click, uh, click enter. And now that's our first one. Now, from there, it's a little bit different. For our second one and beyond, what we want to say is if our second, uh, second section is blank, so two empty quotes, then we also want our number to be blank as well. But if it's not, we want to return the maximum of the previous numbers plus one. So uh, all of the ones, so if it's up to five, we add one and make it six. If it's up to 10, we add one and make it 11. And that's what we use max for. So the maximum of all of these, and we include a dollar sign in here. So when we drag it down, the number five will stay the same, um, but the other ones will, will change. So now we're starting at B5 and then we're dragging it down, but uh, B5 will stay the same and then it will go to B6, B7, B7, B8, and it will count the maximum out of all of those ones. So that's a nice little trick. And if we select enter and for all of these, let's put them in the center and in the middle, increase the size a little bit and make them white. And now that's done exactly what we want. So if we copy this, select the other, other cells and just say paste the formulas, then that is going to do exactly what we want it to do. And that's uh, added a nice, beautiful number for us for the ones that are not blank. So if this one is not blank, then it's going to give us another automatic number. Nice and simple. Now we've got our template and all we need to do is select this, control C to copy and paste this into our next section. And the next section, if we change that, this is the E for environmental challenges or risks coming up in our business. And for the environment, what we need to ask is, how can we source, trade, or test our products and do it in an environmentally safe way? Is everything we do ethically sound? So will it come back to bite us or will it be a nasty news article that we're going to have to figure out or work our way through? Let's keep everything environmentally sound if we can and it ethically sound. And do, what is our carbon footprint? So is it worth reducing our carbon footprint for the future? Because maybe there's going to be costs associated with that, or maybe there's going to be you know, pushback, uh, or again, nasty news articles that may occur. Now let's copy that again, and we'll copy that and paste that down. The next one is our social and our technological risks. And for our social, what we want to ask is, who is our target market? Who are, how are our customer opinions changing regarding our product or service? So are things evolving? Obviously, we don't use uh, as much big desktop computers these days. A lot more people are just, they have mobile phones in their pocket that can do a lot of those things that a, a desktop previously could do. You know, not quite, but that's how things might change. And that's how things are changing into the future as well, we need to be aware of. Um, is our core demographic growing or slowing down? Or, are, uh, or is our core demographic aging? Or you know, are we bringing in more young people? Or you know, whatever that is, is our demographic changing? And how do we interact with our, with our uh, customers on social media, which is really important as well? Or are there any other channels that we need to, to contact people or work with people or customers through? For our technological risks, what, is, what technology is critical for our day-to-day -day operations? What do we absolutely have to have? And it can't go down, it can't have any downtime for this. How do we protect that? Uh, what is the new technology that's available that could streamline our business in the future? Do we depend on third parties? So that's really important. Um, is there a risk there? Do we need to uh, own a part of that? Or do we need to bring them in-house? Or do we need to build it in-house as well? Uh, how are we using technology to stay ahead of our competition? And what can we learn from the data that we collect? So are we getting any great insights into customer patterns? Can we improve our sales in that way? 
And you'll notice our numbers have just gone a little bit awry. So let's have a look at this. Uh, if we select the four that's a little bit off, you'll see it's actually selected all of the ones uh, from, from the top. So what we'll do is just drag this back down uh, so that that's starting from the one that we wanted to. Copy that and paste over our formulas again. And now that's fixed that up very nicely. Lastly, we want to look at our economic and our legal challenges. And for our economic challenges, what taxes are going to impact our business? And is the economy that we're working in stable, unstable, or is it growing or slowing down for the industry that we're working in? For our legal questions, how are we impacted by changes to legislation or regulation? And how do we keep ourselves compliant with necessary government regulations? Um, and are we up to date with data protection? So data protection laws in all the countries that we operate in. So do we need to be open with our data or you know, do we need to protect our data? So these are the things that we need to know in the specific countries that we are operating in. And now all of these are a beautiful way to brainstorm for Pestel analysis uh, and a really great way to get you started in your company and in your team. If we take away the, guide li uh, the grid lines, now that looks a lot nicer. And lastly, we really need an action register as well really quickly. We'll make sure that the rows uh, are again 30 in row height. And really it's very, very simple. On the right hand side, it will be who, will, who is it assigned to? On, in the middle, it'll be our actions. And on the left-hand side, it will just be the number. Now, if we uh, take all these, put these in the middle and the center again, make sure they're a little bit larger. And we can color this just any color that we want. Maybe a nice, uh, nice sandy color there. We can copy down some of the, the formulas from our, previous, uh, from our previous ideas as well. And just make sure that they are uh, exactly what we want. Yep, so that one seems to be right. This one just needs to be adjusted a little bit again. Absolutely no problems. And all we have to do now is just put the borders around this so that, uh, so that it looks like our action register. And our actions are able to be taken on board from each of the brainstormed items. So someone can take ownership of these and take an action and help to mitigate these risks in the future. But now, all in all, we have a beautiful action register so people can take actions and a beautiful Pestel analysis worksheet that we can take and use straight away in our own teams. I've really enjoyed spending the time with you and I hope you've enjoyed creating this spreadsheet with me as well. And I hope you take it and create something amazing in your own business, startup or your team. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.